So I have a pretty extensive collection of dad jokes, and most of them I keep in my database. Um, but what you might not know is I actually know quite a few jokes in sign language, and I guarantee no one's ever heard them. Hey kids, Adam here. Today I'm starting a new series called Dad vs. Waves. Uh, so I will put a card up for my uh, Waves I'm going to leave you video um, where I left Waves for either IK Multimedia T-Rex plugins or Analog Obsession. Since then I've been working a lot with the Toucan plugins and in fact kind of stalling for time here so another card could come up. I'll put a card up for my original Toucan or my Toucan playlist. Um, but what I've decided to do is there are a number of Toucan plugins that are really, really good, especially the second versions that John's been working on. And I decided to take those and do a, a comparison to the Waves plugins that I do own, um, albeit they're a little old. I think they're version 12. I think the new version is 14. I have not upgraded. I own these for life, so I'm going to stay with version 12. But most of these are the originals that have gone back a, a ways, so that's not really a, a version issue. But uh, I'm going to compare the Toucan plugins, or in some cases, uh, like with the 1073, I'm probably going to do the Analog Obsession. Um, but I'm going to do one video per plugin. I'm not going to do the whole gamut of things. I'm going to do a number of different applications for the plugin and how I use it and how I think it works in a mix. So the first episode here is going to be the Pultec EQP-1A. Uh, now, the uh, EQP-1 by Pultec was the first passive program equalizer that was on the market. Uh, I've done a little bit of research on this. It's somewhere in the early 50s, some places say 1951, some places say 1953. And then the EQP-1A was the model that followed after it. I'm not going to go into a big history on these plugins. I'm not a hardware guy. I don't have any hardware other than my, you know, interface over here. Got a little compressor pedal over here, but I mean, that's, I don't use any recording hardware other, other than my interface. Uh, so I'm not really going to go into the, the background on all the hardware here. If you want to do research on it, just search Pultec, uh, EQ, History, Wiki, whatever, and you can get more information on that. Uh, the Waves has a really, really good version of it, and uh, I want to compare it to the Toucan plugin and see how it does. Let's head over to Reaper, and uh, we'll try it out. All right, here on Reaper, this is the song Strange by my band Underground Hive. Uh, I'll put a card here for the song if you want to listen to it. It's been featured on this channel a number of times. I do promise I will not stick to just using Strange for all of these videos. In fact, I'm going to do a new mix on a old song, uh, part two of a song that I did, or part two of a video series I started uh, last year, maybe even the year before, uh, and I'll use some of those, some of the plugins on that. Uh, but here, just the main uh, mix bus. Um, I'm doing some very, very slight EQ here. I have both the boost and attenuation at 2 at 30 hertz, and I have the boost at 12K up to 3, and that's all I'm doing. Uh, just two little short you know, moves, one for the highs and kind of some air, and then one the pull tech trick to kind of pull that bass uh, and the low end together. Um, let me just play you the mix with it on and off, back and forth a couple times. You can see what it does. It's doing a lot. I mean, it really opens up that low end and it really adds the air on the high end. Uh, so let's bring in the uh, Toucan plugin and see what it sounds like here. Now, you have to go in and add um, the beta plugins because he's working on a Series 2, and then you have to synchronize the packages. The one you want is actually called the EQT Toucan. And now the first version was the EQT1A. Um, that works. It doesn't sound exactly like a Pultec. It doesn't have some of the features that he has on the new one, but that's not the one we're going to look at. We're going to look at the uh, the Toucan plugin here. And we'll bring this in. I'm going to move this up underneath, unselect it. And uh, the first thing you'll notice is when you drag these out, now the new version of the Toucan plugins will resize to whatever size window you have. So I'll put it right about there. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this settings the exact same that I have them on 
on the uh, waves and we'll just kind of go back and forth and see what they sound like. I may have to make some adjustments. Um, so we're just at about two here. We're at two here. And we're at 30 hertz. That's fine. Band is all the way down for the uh, boost section, which is going to be at three. 3.01 is probably fine. Put it up to 12. Um, this doesn't, this is only going to affect this attenuation, but I want to make sure it's there because someone will point it out. And then the output, even though the gain says zero in the waves, the output at five is a uh, uniform gain. So uh, let's go back and forth between these two and uh, see what they sound like here. Start with the waves and I'll put something on the screen as to which one is playing. First thing you notice is the Waves has a lot more mid-range, and even though these plugins aren't really affecting the mid-range, um, there's a quite a bit difference there. So I'm gonna play around. I'm not gonna talk through this. I'm just gonna play around and go back and forth, see if I can get it to sound similar. Um, now, this could be a number of different things. This could be uh, really not an EQ P1A, it could be the original one, it could be the three, it could be different hardware versions sound differently. So Waves might have modeled one hardware version and John uh, model another. In fact, I guarantee that's what happened. Um, but let me just play around with this and see if I can get it close and uh, I'll be right back. I got it close. Uh, I had to take this frequency all the way from 12K down to 3K. Uh, and then I the boost, I had to uh, bump down a little bit more. I had to uh, make the bandwidth a little bit more. I didn't mess with the low end at all. I thought that sounded pretty close. Um, so what we'll say here, it's not exact as the waves, but I could play with this for a bit of time and get this to sound pretty much just like the waves. Let's go to something that you'll really, really definitely hear the differences, uh, and that's a kick drum. This, the kick drum is the number one thing that I use the pull tech on. Uh, so let's see, bring this up, and uh, let's just, I'll play the, with the pull tech on and off just so you can hear what it's doing here. So it's doing, it's adding a lot of low end. In fact, I do the pull tech trick. Um, and you, in fact, you can research the pull tech trick and what that actually is. Essentially it does a boost and then a cut like right at the frequency uh, range, you know, like that. Um, by setting the boost and attenuation at the same amount. I do it at 60 Hertz and then I do a boost um, at above three at 3K. And then this attenuation cuts things off at about 5K, just a little bit to get it, you know, get it out of the way. Uh, let's bring in the Toucan EQT2 can. Bring that up here. Move things around a little bit. Get so you can see it. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put this up to five. Come on, there we go. Um, put the bandwidth to zero, 60 hertz, boost up to three, or 2.99, this all the way down to three, and then the uh, attenuation at 5K up to three as well. And I will admit the first time I used the pull tech, I thought you could do the, the Pull tech trick on the upper bands as well. That's not really how this works at all, but it 
sounded fine, so that's where I left it. So let's go back and forth between this. They probably won't sound the same, but uh, we'll see. One thing I notice is the high end isn't as uh, accentuated on the Toucan plugin. Let me try to adjust that. I think the low end is fine. I'm going to leave that where it is. In fact, the high end probably doesn't even really matter much, but I just want to get these to sound the same or as close to the same as I can. I think that sounds really good. I only had to move the boost uh, um, up, uh, you know, two notches, and uh, it sounds it sound very, very similar. In fact, uh, next mix, I'm going to use just this and dial it in, and probably won't even realize that I'm not using the uh, the Waves plugin. Um, so that's kick drum. That's like my number one go-to plugin on the kick. Uh, in this mix, I didn't feel I needed to do much gating, so I didn't do any at all. Usually, I will gate the kick out, and then I'll put the pull tech immediately after that. Uh, let's move on to the next plugin, which or next track, which is snare, um, and we'll do the same thing. Uh, I am doing a lot of gating on this. I'm adding the snare buzz plugin um, from Waves Factory, and then I do the pull tech for most of the EQ uh, on the snare. So let's take a listen to uh, what this snare sounds like. And it's really not doing a lot. It's kind of just uh, kind of just increasing a couple of frequencies and just enhancing a couple things. So let's bring in the two can and see what we can get done here. All right. So let's see. We'll do the same thing. We'll take um, this and put it a little over three. What is this? Like three point two attenuations down at zero. Bandwidth is at four point four for the highs. Boost is at like seven, 6.7 here. Frequency is at eight. Um, and then the attenuation just below two. And that's all the way at 20. So let's see uh, what this sounds like going back and forth here. I think it sounds really, really close to being the same. Again, this wasn't doing a whole lot. I mean, we do have this big boost way up here, but it's at 8K. There's a lot of air up there. Um, if anything, it's just bringing out that really incredibly annoying ring, um, but which actually kind of fits in well with the song once I get it you know, tuned in and, and dialed in and everything. Uh, next thing, let's go to the bass um, and uh, take a look at what I'm doing here on the bass. Bring up the entire bass folder here. And let's go to this section. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm doing a boost and attenuation. Again, the pull tech trick at uh, four this time. I'm doing a boost of at five and a half of like 4K, and I'm doing the, that just to get more a little bit of the attack. Uh, and that's, that's really it. And then I had to bring the gain down a little bit just so I could level match, uh, make sure I'm not killing things. Um, so let me do with the... Uh, Pull tech on and off. I'm doing this on my bass folder itself because I have a couple of different sounds that are filtering into this. It's kind of bringing in um, a little bit of low end, but it's that 4K is kind of bringing in some high definition without being harsh. Uh, it's really, really, really subtle, but uh, I kind of like what it's doing here. Uh, I actually got this off a trick from um, Warren Hewitt over at Produce Like a Pro. He was talking about a hardware unit that a lot of bass uh, players are getting, and it was a Pultec, I think it's a 500 series. So it's a different piece of hardware than this, but I said, hey, I wonder if I could use the Pultec 
on a bass track and see what that would sound like. And I, I like uh, what I'm getting on it. So let's add the toucan in here. Um, let me just, you know what, let me level match with just the toucan here. That's pretty good. Now we'll do the comparison. So that uh, is the bass sound. I think that sounds really, really good. Uh, in fact, I don't think I would even need to change this. This is the first one um, that we didn't have to change anything to make it sound like almost exactly like uh, what the Waves plugin sounds like. So that's the Toucan versus Waves. I think the uh, Toucan definitely, I wouldn't say one wins out over the other, but since the Toucan's free and it's made by an amazing person in John Matthews and Waves kind of is really been irritating me over the years, I think the Toucan's going to win this one. I'm not going to do a running tally of what wins because I kind of already know and I think you guys probably already know. Otherwise, I wouldn't really be doing this series. Uh, I did find it really interesting that the Master Fader... Um, the application of the Toucan on the Master Fader was vastly different. I think why is because the original uh, EQ is just dealing with, with bass and treble and it handles the mids with that weird attenuation knob and things in there. Um, I think the Waves did a better job of preserving those mids where I think the Toucan may be actually working more towards an, an original uh, pull tech where it's not really handling those tools. I could play around with it a lot and probably move things around and get that working. Um, I may not even use the uh, the high band on a uh, master fader. I may just use other EQs, uh, but that'll, that'll come in the next mix that I do, and uh, we'll see what happens because I'm going to take a look at it. So uh, what do you think? Do you still use the Waves? Uh, do you use the Toucan? Have you used the new version of the Toucan, the Series 2? Uh, if so, if you run into any issues, because I know John is very, very aware, uh, or I should say he's on top of the issues, um, very communicative for uh, people that reply to him and let him know there's issues. He fixes them on a regular basis and he puts out new videos with all the fixes. Um, but, you know, in the meantime, why don't you uh, like and, you know, comment and subscribe to this video and or the channel and let me know uh, what you think. Let me know uh, what other plugins you would like me to to go uh, do head-to-head -head versus waves. They don't even have to be a Toucan plugin. Like I said, the 1073 EQ is probably going to be next, and that will be an Analog Obsessions, uh, the Brit channel. But uh, stay tuned for more in this series. Until next time, have yourselves an amazing until next time. Uh, and the first one is the Pultec uh, EPQ, EQP, e, WTF.